Cause the Spirit was moving over the waters The Spirit come move over us Come rest on us Come rest on us As the Spirit was moving over the water Spirit come move over us Come rest on us Come rest on us So come now Spirit when you move you make my heart pound When you feel the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me come down Spirit when you move Feel 
me when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you feel me. Father, help us to submit to you and do the things you want us to do rather than the things we want to do. We'll glorify your name. Hallelujah. We pray you touch all the people here that are in need of healing, all the people here that are in need of drawing closer to you. Draw close to you. Draw the Holy Spirit. Prayer and salvation. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Help us live and walk in the Spirit each day. We glorify your name, Father. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, who is to be. Lift your voices to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise your name. Don't be bashful. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Holy, holy, holy. Football is cool, but I think wrestling is the best sport. <laughs> and Noah agrees with me. You can't, just hand, you can't just give Patrick Mahomes the ball and be like, hey, do something magical. Like, if you've got a wrestling team, if your team's going to win, then uh, everybody's got to be a part of it. Um, like... Everybody, every single person has a part to play. There's no bench sitters. There's no, none of the, like, receivers hanging out here just to draw off this defender and, like, ready? Here comes the play. Go. And there, there goes the play over there. Like, if, if a team's going to win, like, everyone's got to be in. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to be working hard. Everybody's got to be committed. Um, well... 
Uh, so we've been learning a lot about the Holy Spirit, right? And, oh, man, it's been so good. I've enjoyed this so much. I love hearing um, Louie and Amy and Bob speak about this. And um, I'm really looking forward to having Bob Laughlin next week. So if any of you guys can be here, I hope every one of you can be here. That'll just be an awesome time. Um, and so going through this, going through the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's something that I think in the church, maybe it's overlooked, maybe it's ignored. It's, it's, a, little bit, it's a little bit unpredictable, right? Like, Scripture is, is predictable. It's so predictable, I could quote some of it to you, word for word. But then, but God's not exactly predictable. Like, you can't put God in a box because He's actually omnipresent. He's everywhere. You can't, you can't fit Him into a corner of life. You can't fit Him into church. You can't fit Him into, like, one person's theology or, or one... You can't fit Him into one thing. You can't boil the essence of who God is down to one thing. He's infinite. If you want to boil the essence of who God is, what God is, into one thing. It's, oh, He's infinite. Like, try to wrap your mind around that. And, and we can't. But we want something safe. Um, C.S. Lewis made, in his uh, Chronicles of Narnia, made Aslan, who's a, a representation of Jesus, a lion. And, and there's this part where the kid's first meet the beavers and the beavers are telling him about Aslan and they're like the great lion our you know our king the king of all kings and they say is he safe and they go well are you listening he's a lion of course he's not safe but he's good <laughs> but he's good and so um, the Holy Spirit might not feel that safe but you know what he's good always good he's he's perfect. He knows, he knows you. The Holy Spirit searches out the hearts of man. He knows everything that's in your heart and He loves you. He knows everything, all the evil thoughts of my heart. He knows everything that I've ever thought or done and still He draws me with kindness. Still He, still he reaches out to us because no, none of us can come to Christ unless the Spirit calls Him. And so as terrible as we were, and no matter how good you think you are, like, go back through your mind and all of the twisted things you've ever thought. He knows all of those things, and He still drew us to Christ with kindness. It's the mercy of God that leads us to repentance. So, it can be scary, the, the Holy Spirit sometimes, because... As we learn, the Holy Spirit distributes gifts as He sees fit. He doesn't give us gift. He doesn't give us the gifts we want when we want them. He gives us the gifts when He wants to give them, when He wants to use us. When when He's like, I want to minister to that person. I'm giving you a gift of healing for that person. Go. That's kind of scary, God. What's up with that? It's not safe. Like, it, He's not safe, but He's good. And, and all the gifts that He gives are good. Um, and so I think because the Holy Spirit is so unpredictable, I guess, He's predictably good. He's predictably holy. Everything, every time you have an encounter where you're like, man, that was the Holy Spirit, you walk away better. Like, you walk away going, oh, man, that was exactly what I needed right then. I did not think... I needed that. That was exactly what I needed. That's not what I came for, but it's what I needed. It's not what I wanted, but it's 100% what I needed. Um, and because he's so unpredictable like that, I think the church, I think human nature is we want to kind of like, whoa, whoa, let's, let's see if we can kind of put him in this area where he's just, uh, he's just a, a seal of, of salvation, like can we just leave him there and like speaking, dude, speaking in tongues, tongues and interpretation, that is so unpredictable. 
that is so scary. Like, I think that God's given me a tongue, but who's going to interpret it? Like, oh, let's step out in faith. Man, that's scary. That's so unpredictable. And so we want to leave them aside and be like, wait, can we just stick with like the ordered, structured, predictable service? Can, can we just stick with like a theology that we can wrap it up in a nice little box and tie it with a bow and just be like, there, this is, look at this really, really awesome box of God's love, maybe a, a smidge of repentance, um, some good morality, like, boom, there we go. How's that? Is that cool for Christianity? Can we do that? And the Holy Spirit's like, nah. <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to do God's work in this world. I'm going to be a power in this world that you don't get to control because God is the one who's controlling everything. God is the one who, who turns the hearts of men. God is the one who draws people. God is the one who establishes authorities. And so that's, that's going to be what the Holy Spirit's doing in this world. But um, when it comes to talking about the Holy Spirit and gifts of the Holy Spirit, I wanted to read you guys a passage that's, I'd say, probably the primary thing that people go, hey, what about this? It's in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verses 8 through 12. It says, love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. And whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. And that's a verse, that's only down to 10. We're going to read to 12 because a lot of people like to stop at 10 and be like, see, look, once we got Scripture, there's, once, we got, once we put the Bible all together, we don't really need a special revelation anymore. We've received the revelation Scripture is perfect. That which is perfect has come, then, then prophecy and tongues and knowledge will be done away with. I mean, I would say we still need knowledge, but that's just me. Um, but I, he, if we go a little farther, a friend of mine, uh, a, long, a while back, young guy came to me and was like, hey, this is what my church is teaching, that Scripture was made perfect, and so... Prophecy stop, tongues stop, like knowledge, which is maybe words of knowledge, like special revelation, that stuff stopped. I said, well, why don't you read further and tell me what you think it says. So he said, reads 11 and 12. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part then I will know fully just as I am fully known. I'm like, oh, do you know fully? He's like, no. I said, well then, I'd say this verse in context is saying when, when we're face to face with God, that's perfection. When we know fully, just as I'm fully known, there's nobody, honestly, there's nobody that knows me fully except God right now. I don't even, I probably honestly don't know myself fully. There's, there's thoughts that I've had that I'm just like, whoa, shove that deep down, never let that come to the surface again, and forget about it. And so, I'll, like, there's parts of me that I don't like, and, uh, and so we'll, we'll cram those down, put those aside, and be like, I don't want that to be part of me. And I don't even recognize that or acknowledge that. But God knows that. He's the only one who knows me fully. And... And so when it says, I'll know, I'll be fully known, like that means one thing, that I'm in heaven. That's, that's the only thing that could possibly mean. That I know fully, that, I, that I'll know you, each of you, completely in heaven. Everything, all of you, exactly the way God knows you. And you'll know me exactly the way that God knows me. There, that can only be one thing. That's never going to happen here. Never going to happen here. Only when we are face to face with God. Um, so if anyone ever brings up that objection, it's super simple. They, they'll read verse 13, 8 to 10. Be like, let's read 11 and 12. And then see what that means. So when we take scripture in context, then it tells us prophecy, tongues, 
special knowledge, words of knowledge, even miracles. We don't really need miracles in heaven, will we? We'll never get sick, we'll never grow old, we'll never get tired. That'll be great. (laughs) He actually says in verse 13, Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Because right now we have faith. And we have hope. Like we have faith that Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead. And that because He was raised from the dead, we'll be raised with Him. And we have have hope that we get to share in His inheritance in His eternal kingdom. But when that which is perfect has come, faith and hope... We don't need faith when we're standing with Jesus... We don't need hope when we're in God's presence in heaven, like when we're at His throne. We, don't, we don't, won't need faith and hope then, but love will still exist. That's why it's the greatest of those. But, he, but here we need faith and hope. Here we need prophecy. Here we need tongues and interpretation. Here we need words of knowledge. Because we are not complete. We are, we are broken. Um, and so... Uh, Oh, here's another verse for you also. Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. I'm going to flip to it. Uh, Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. go, yeah, that's great. That's for the first century church. Uh, just to clarify, he says in verse 39, For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So when the Holy Spirit came on the church in Acts chapter 2, and the people, that they went out speaking in tongues, and people are like, what's up with these guys? Are they drunk? And then there were people from all over the world going, no, he's speaking my language. He's speaking my, my really tiny little tribal dialect like no they're speaking and they're speaking to us they're preaching and proclaiming God's greatness to to my language and then then they say well what's going on and Peter stands up and and preaches a sermon to them and and they're cut to the quick they say what do we do to be saved he's like repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and you'll receive the Holy Spirit and it, this promise isn't just for you but for your children and for all who are far off all who will be called by God Everyone who will hear this message, everyone who will hear this message and believe in Jesus and repent and be baptized will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, Acts, Peter said when he preached, when he's preaching, first thing, like, what's going on in the church now? That's the promise for every generation until Christ comes again. Every generation for the rest of history, this promise is for you. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's wonderful, huh? So, um, I want to talk today a little bit about what the Holy Spirit does as a collective not just on an individual, not just on an individual level, where he gives gifts of healing and knowledge and prophecy of tongues and interpretation of miracles of faith, but on a collective level, like what's he, do? big picture, what's the Holy Spirit doing? Um, and the Holy Spirit works to bring unity in the body of Christ. Uh, I want to go to. So many good verses, we're going to get into a lot of scripture. Let's start with Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Oh, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. What's in Galatians number 5? Where are my children, church kids at? We're going to start in verse 16. And learn about a little more than just the fruits of the Spirit. Because he talks about the fruits of the flesh also. We don't memorize those in Sunday school though. (laughs) In Galatians 5.16, he says, I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. 
But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. This is the list we don't memorize. Which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are those who are Christ's have been crucified, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. So we see, like, okay, the, the works of the flesh are evident. And there's some that I'm like, yeah, adultery, oof, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, witchcraft. Which, by the way, my dad told me this in, uh, in Greek, the word witchcraft, the root of that word is pharmaceutica. So, like, witchcraft in the Bible in the Old Testament and where God speaks about it, it's actually mind-altering drugs that people would take and have visions. And they'd have demonic visions, really. They, they would get special revelation, special knowledge from the spiritual realm through drug use. And, and that's, I mean, not much has changed. What's that... Uh, The Bible doesn't just tell us what happened. It tells us what always happens, as as Mark Driscoll says. Like, it's same story. Uh, New day, same old story. It's uh, it's like a Hallmark movie. (laughs) (laughs) New characters, same plot. (laughs) Um... Oh, so, so we get into these, you're like, oh yeah, uh, idolatry, witchcraft, drunkenness, revelries. I, I think the NIV says orgies, like, oof, yeah, that's horrible. But he also, he also includes uh, contentions, jealousy, selfish ambition. Oh, man. Because as far as I know, there's never been any selfish ambition in the church. I'm glad I didn't have to uh, explain that with sarcasm to you guys. Picked right up. Um, There's dissension. Like, oh man, really? So we're, it's easy to look at the things that are like, oh yeah, those are so bad. And that's bad. You're wrong. You're evil for doing that. But then ignore, like, well, yeah, I'll, I might have a little bit of selfish ambition, but it's not like drunkenness or, or revelries. It's not, like, it's not like witchcraft or, you know, illicit drug use. It's not like that. It's just on the same exact list is what it is. It's a, like contentions, being at odds with one another, not loving one another. Like, that's on the same list. But... The fruit of the Spirit are things that bring unity. Love, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Because when, I, when you say something to me that offends me, and uh, I love you, and I know you love me, I give you the benefit of the doubt. I assume that what you said, like, you didn't mean it the way that I interpreted it. And then I can say, hey, what, what did you mean? I, I felt like you were kind of uh, attacking me. And you go, oh, I'm sorry, I, I do not want to hurt you. Or maybe it's like, well, I think you've been a knucklehead. And <laughs> like, oh, man, you know what? Maybe I need to go look at myself and think about that. That's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Those, the fruit of the Spirit brings unity. Yeah. 
when I'm, when I'm kind and I'm patient and I'm joyful, we're not going to have contentions, are we? If, if, I'm, if I'm loving, if I'm, if I'm faithful, I'm not going to have selfish ambitions, am I? So the, the fruit of the Spirit, what the Spirit is doing in the body is bringing the body together, is bringing unity. And what the flesh does is create contentions. What the flesh does is backbiting, is selfish ambition, is trying to like jockey for position in the church or in the ministry that I'm a part of. I want to be the top of it. Someone else is ahead of me. And now, we're, now I'm trying to make them look bad and make myself look better. That's the flesh. That's, that's division in the body. That's not unity. That's not the Holy Spirit working. The Holy Spirit working is love, joy, peace, is patience and kindness, is goodness and faithfulness, is gentleness and self-control. Outbursts of wrath, that's the flesh. Gentleness, self-control, that's the Holy Spirit. Because when it comes down to it, we're all... Yeah, we're all human. Actually, as a matter of fact, I've got this nice little cut, deep gash. I was working with some metal this week, trying to roll out a nice little piece of metal for a valley. And it was, it was a roll of metal. I don't know if you know this, but when you roll metal up and cram it into a roll for a year, then it stays that shape no matter what you do. So I rolled it out and like trying to hold it up open and cut it, and it slipped out. Whack! Right on my thumb. And I... I made up swear words. <laughs> to, Me too. I went through the list. I went through the list of all of them that I know. And when I got to the end of the list, I'm like, I still need more. <laughs> Start over and see if we can see if we can invent a couple new ones in between. While I was trying to trying to keep my thumb like this so it would not bleed everywhere, but it already was, and trying to open up a band-aid with one hand. My teeth. Yeah, and then that's what I had to do. After getting a Band-Aid on, and then it was just blood coming out around it, like, start wrapping it, you son of a... Mother. <laughs> Every word. I'm, I'm not asking for your approval. Just... Your understanding, maybe a little bit of forgiveness, maybe understanding that, like we're we're in this together, that's and right. the Holy Spirit's work is to, that's that maybe was a little bit of work of the flesh, <laughs> possibly, but if if I have that, and and you're there, um, and you have the fruit of the Spirit of patience and kindness, and you could be like, hey. Let me help you take care of that. Oh, man, that brings unity. That, that makes me appreciate you and love you. When someone messes up, when someone screws up, and we're like, hey, I'm not perfect either. Let me help you. Let me, let me come alongside you. Let me be patient. Let me be loving. Let me bring some joy. Like, I see you're down, and you're having a hard time. I see you're depressed, and you're, you're struggling. Let me bring a little bit of joy. Yes. Um, that creates unity in the church. Um, let's go to Ephesians. So we just turn a couple pages over. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. I love this. Ephesians chapter 1 is one of the greatest chapters. It's so, look, we got time, let's read it. Um, <laughs> Starting in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. He just, go, he just like kicks it off full on, like, hey guys, every spiritual blessing is ours. Like, hey, that's a good way to start a conversation, isn't it? This is Paul's letter to the Ephesians. This is how he starts the letter, like, praise be to God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. 
Man, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. That's a... If I... If you send me a letter and that's how you start it out, I'm going to be like, my favorite letter ever. I'm I'm reading this thing to the end. I don't care what comes next. Like, that's... Man. He says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. Now, verses uh, 13 and 14. In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. This is, this is really cool. When he says, uh, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, you were sealed has a specific meaning. and it, It's seen by some as referring to justification, but that term is not used here. I'm reading the note now. And the emphasis is different Justification brings acceptance. Sealing brings authority. So when he says you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, you were given authority when you accepted Christ. When you accepted Christ, you were given the you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, which means you were given the authority to do whatever Jesus did. Because that's what if you look at Jesus' life. Jesus never did anything out of His divinity. Always He did it out of submission to the Father and to the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I don't say anything of myself. I'm not speaking any of my words. I only say, I only speak what I hear the Father speaking. I only do what I see the Father doing. So it was the Holy Spirit working in Jesus. He didn't use His, He didn't use, he, I take that back. I was going through my mind. He did actually use his divinity for one thing. He offered forgiveness. He said, your sins are forgiven. And they said, how can you forgive? Only God can forgive. And he says, just so you know, I'm God. Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or take up your mat and walk. Just so you know that I'm God. I have the authority to forgive. That was was him using his divine authority to forgive. He says, take up your mat and walk. And the paralytic... Took his mat and walked away. (laughs) Just so you know, Jesus has the authority to forgive. That's the only time he functioned in divinity and not his humanity. So his whole life, his whole life, everything that Jesus ever did was done in his humanity in submission to the Father and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when it says, when Paul says here that you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, means you were given authority when the Holy Spirit came into your life, you have now the authority to do whatever Christ did. Jesus said that to His disciples. Whatever you see me doing, you'll do greater because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Um, well, yeah. Um, so the, the Holy Spirit gives us authority. And... And for a purpose, like we learned, Louis, Bob talked about it, Amy talked about it. It's to build up the body of Christ. It's to, it's to bless God and His people. 
Um, in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19, it says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Everyone, just so you know, everyone that trusts in Christ, everyone who claims the name of Christ, is family, is, has the same name. All, all people. and The whole family in heaven and earth is named. Everyone who trusts in Christ is family, is brother. It's, it's universal unity. Not universal as in everything and everyone and every idea and every belief and there's a million ways to God know. It's everyone who's trusted Christ for salvation is unified together as one family. Um, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend together with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Remember this about Jesus. God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. And then when we're unified, when we're together as a church, um, strengthening, being strengthened with might through his spirit, when we're unified in love, when we're rooted and grounded in love, when we're a tree and our roots are into love, when we're a building and our foundation is love, then together, together with all the saints, when we're together, when we're unified as the body of Christ in love, being strengthened by His Holy Spirit, then we get a chance to know the, the width and length and depth and height of the love of Christ as a unified body. When there's contentions, when there's selfish ambitions, when there's backstabbing and backbiting and gossip and slander, we don't get to know that. But when we're united, when we're rooted and grounded in love, then we get to, together, understand the height and depth and width of God's love. We get to explore so many more dimensions when, when we're not divided over a tiny little thing or when I'm not take, holding an offense against you, but when we're united in love, then, then you get to share with me what God's speaking to you and I get to understand new revelation of His Word and of who He is because I get to see it from your perspective. That's what I, I loved listening to Louie and Amy and Bob preach, I learned so much. Like, I'm studying this too. It's not, and if it was a competition, if there was vain ambition or, or jealousy or, or contention among us, I wouldn't have got to learn. That's right. but, but when there's love, when the Spirit's working, I'm studying this stuff too. And every, every single person who comes up here and speaks I learned something new. And we get to learn, we get to experience more of who God is when we're in relationship with one another, in right relationship, in, in a relationship rooted and grounded in love. When, we're, when, when we let the Holy Spirit speak to us, I feel like God speaks to me often. And also, He uses other people to confirm it. Or He uses other people to speak straight to me. And that, that's, that's what the Holy Spirit is. I get to experience more of the Holy Spirit when I'm listening to you, when I'm loving you, when I'm not holding any grudges against you, then you can come speak to me. Then I can learn from you. Then I can see Scripture in a new way that I've never seen it before. 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, but 
13 is the center post of those things. I learned that. I never really thought of that. And then Louis came and, sh- and spoke and shared that with us. It's like, oh my gosh, it is, huh? It is. It's, love is not a separate thing. People like to separate that out and be like, oh, the love chapter. They read chapter 13 at, at weddings. They don't read 12 and 14. <laughs> or we read chapter 12 and 14 when we're talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, but we leave out, or when we're talking about gifts, but we leave out love, the greatest um, and we get to learn those things. We get to learn from one another when we're, when we're united, when we're walking in the fruits of the Spirit and not the acts of the flesh. Right? Um, John chapter 17, verses 20 to 23. This is so special. Oh my gosh, this is... The title of this is Jesus Prays for All Believers. I, this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture just because whenever I, when I was a kid or whenever I came to this, it's like Jesus prays for all His disciples. I'm like, oh, this is what Jesus prayed for me. This is so great. Okay. He just, he just got finished praying for His disciples and He says, I don't pray for these alone, but also... For those who will believe in me through their word. Oh, that's me, by the way. I believe in Jesus through their word. They, they preached, they wrote down what Christ did. They, wrote, they told me about his death on the cross in scripture. And I now believe because of their preaching, because of their word. So for us, that they, what's how many times he says one? That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. That's when Jesus took time, not just to write it, but John took the time to write down like, hey, Jesus prayed for everyone who's ever going to read this. I'm going to write down what he prayed. This is what he put. This is what Jesus prayed. Unity, unity among each other, unity among them and me and the Father, unity among each other, that they are unified the way that I'm unified with God and the Holy Spirit, that they're in community the way that I'm in community with God and the Holy Spirit, that they might be one, that they might be unified. That's what he prayed. He didn't pray. There's so many things that he could have prayed. So many things that he could have prayed and and what he cared about, what Jesus thought was important, what Jesus was like, I'm going to talk to my Father. I'm going to ask God to do something. Here's what I'm going to ask him to do. Unity, unity, unity. They may be one. They may be one. That they may be one. Because when we're unified together, then we get to we get to experience the unity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, God God is God pre exists time, space and matter. Right? In order for something to create time, space, and matter, it has to exist outside of those things. Um, which why, like, who created God? Like, God's the uncreated one. That's the, that's the whole point. That's what makes Him God, is that He exists outside of time, space, and matter. So, that means He existed for eternity. Also, it takes a will to create. Just, like, if there's no will there's no will to create, if there's no will to design, it doesn't happen. Like, if you can have all the raw material in the world, if there's no power put into it, you're not making anything. That's right. So it takes a will to create, it takes a mind. Um, but God existed for eternity, forever. He existed forever. There's no, there's no start to His existence. It seems boring. Like, what is, 
What is now? What is time? What is the last 20 billion years? It's irrelevant to a being who existed forever. But doesn't that sound boring? It would, <laughs> except for one thing. God, as God, the one God, as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, existed in community forever before He came along. Before He created us in His image. When He created us in His image, just remember, He had, he had just finished spending eternity in community. And then he says, Let's, let us make man in our image of that community. God said, the God said, let us make man in our image. Who is he talking about? Oh, he's talking about Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We were created in the image of community. And we can't exist. We can't know the depth and height and width of God's love without community. Man, that seems, wouldn't it be easier if we could just like know God just individually? But that's not the way God created us. That's not the way God exists. It's not the way that Jesus existed. And when Jesus prayed for us, he said, let them be unified, Father, in the same way that I'm unified with you. Like, let them be in community with one another in the same way that you and I are in community with one another. And He sent us to accomplish this, His Holy Spirit. Because we just, can't, we just can't live in community with one another the right way. We need more. Like, I need more. Like, by myself, I'm inventing new swear words. <laughs> Over a little flesh wound. I didn't even... My thumb still works. I didn't even... Feels a little weird, but it still works. Like, I need help. I can't do this. I can't do this by myself. Um, I can't do this if we're if we're offended at one another. I can't do this if we have selfish ambition. I can't do this. I, I can do this if you love me. I can I can help you if I love you. Like, I can encourage you if, if I love you. I can help you through depression if I can lean on the Holy Spirit for joy. I can't do anything by myself. We, that's why the Holy Spirit was sent. And um, like we learned from Bob and Amy and Louie, there's many gifts. There's one body. So God doesn't take away our individuality. Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit... They sure look like individuals, even though they're one God, even though they're united in perfect community, in love and joy, in peace. They, think about that. They existed in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, together, the three of them in perfect unity for eternity. And that's what Jesus prayed for you, for me. He prayed that for us, that we would be united in perfect peace, love, joy, patience, that we'd be united in the fruits of the Spirit. And He gave us the gifts of the Spirit in order to bring that about, in order to bring about our unity. Um, all right, so there's one more thing, because um, it still seems the, whole, the, the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, still almost seem a little bit like abstract. But Luke makes it concrete for us. In Luke chapter 11... Verses 9. I, want to, I thought about this. I'm like, man, I want to jump right into this. And then I'm like, you know what, though? F myself, personally, if you tell me the world is being run by lizard people, I'm like, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Also, don't care. Like, what is it? Does that affect me? No. If the world's being run by lizard people now, it's been run by lizard people for the last 20 years. I lived my life the last 20 years. Things are going awesome. I've got kids. I've got family. I've, I've got a house. My wife's awesome. I, I like what I do for work. I'm like, I don't care if they're running it. I'm doing fine. But if you're like, oh, the lizard people are running the world and they're trying to destroy the global food supply, I go, oh, so I should stock up on some emergency food. There you go. I want something to do. If you're just going to give me random information, 
I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, these guys are doing this. I'm like, oh, shoot them. <laughs> these people are kidnapping kids. Like, I say kill them. If somebody goes and does it, I'm not going to lose any sleep. But, uh, like, what do I do about it? Well, if there's something that I can do, that's what I want to know. If, if you've got something like, the economy's going to collapse. Like, okay, I can't control it. Why, why are you telling me that? Like, silver's going to be worth a million dollars an ounce. Like, I'll buy a few ounces of silver because it's only 22 bucks an ounce right now. <laughs> but I want something to do. I want something practical because if you just tell me something great information, uh, I'm going to file that in a folder I have called don't need to remember. <laughs> if you give me any information that has no practical application, it's just like, okay, <laughs> there we go. I'm like, don't you remember I told you that? Like, no, I'm sure you did though. I don't, I don't doubt you. I just don't remember. Um, so, so then I decided I want to end with this. Luke chapter 11, verse 9 through 13. It says, Jesus says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. A better translation is ask and keep asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep seeking and you will find. Knock and keep knocking and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks and keeps asking receives. Everyone who seeks and keeps seeking finds. And to him who knocks and keeps knocking, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, which we've already established, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? And so if you want to know what we're talking about, the unity of the body, and what, like what Jesus' prayer was for us, what my prayer is for you, ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Because we're not that great. But I still know how to give my kids good gifts. How much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask relentlessly. That's what ask, seek, knock means. Don't stop. Be relentless. Relentless in your pursuit of saying, God, I want the Holy Spirit. God, I want you to send me the Holy Spirit. God, I want the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Be relentless in asking Him, God, I want to hear your voice. I want you to speak to me. I want you to send me your Holy Spirit to make me holy, to reveal Christ to me. I want you to speak to me, God. Relentlessly seek. Relentlessly knock. Relentlessly ask. Don't stop. Don't stop pushing in. Don't stop pursuing that. Every chance you get, prayer and worship night, come, come sit in the pew. Come kneel down and say, God, give me your Holy Spirit. When you get home, Go into your room and shut the door. God, give me your Holy Spirit. Ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Because if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father give you the Holy Spirit? How much more is He going to give you His, His Spirit? He, he's not, if you're going to God, if you're going, God, I want what you have for me. God, I want your gifts. I want your Spirit. He's not going to let something else come in there. If we're opening our hearts to the Holy Spirit of God, who is a seal of our inheritance, God's not going to let anything else come in and, and mess that up. If we keep on asking, keep on seeking, be relentless. If it's like, oh, not yet, not yet, wait, 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 it, it's never going to be a no. When we ask God for His Holy Spirit, it's never going to be a no. So... Um, and remember in, in Acts, Peter said, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and you'll receive the Holy Spirit. So there's a, I'd say an element of repentance of like, God, I'm willing to give up whatever. I just want your Holy Spirit. So it, 
Jesus said, if you want to come after me, take up your cross and follow me. So we have to say, I'm willing to give up anything, but I want the Holy Spirit. And if we do that, if you do that, what the Holy Spirit does, like He gives good gifts. He gives us the seal of authority. He gives us authority. He gives us gifts. He gives us fruit of love, joy, peace. So it's 100% worth it. Like whatever we have to give up, it's 100% worth it. Sell everything we own to buy that one pearl of great value, whatever it takes. Sell everything we own to buy that field with the treasure in it, as Jesus said in his parables. Whatever it takes, ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. And, um, and God will give us the Holy Spirit. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. And, and I'd say one more thing. I don't think ask and keep asking for the Holy Spirit is a one-time thing. I don't think it's just one time that God gives, you, gives us the Holy Spirit. I think it's a, a daily outpouring. And I, I want that every day. Every, honestly, every day I need the Holy Spirit to get through every day. And sometimes I ignore him for a few minutes and let that piece of metal know what I think of it. <laughs> and then I come back like, gosh, I really need the Holy Spirit every day. Let's, let's ask and, and seek and knock every day. Um, are we going to do a song to end? Yeah, we are. We're just let's do a song. Let's do a song to end. Yeah. <laughs> enjoyable on the wait and no is painful but when you're in his perfect will yes no and wait never matter so we're going to sing this be still I want to remind you no matter what you're going through right now I'm reminding myself his answers are yes they're no and they're wait and he asks us only to be still Who's perfect in peace, my champion. 
champion and all that I Holy Spirit, come renew. 